Picture this. Your phone is dying, your laptop needs charging, and your external drive refuses to connect. You dig into your drawer, pull out a cable, and suddenly you're playing a game of tech roulette. Will it fit? Is it upside down? Is this the wrong generation entirely? In those tense few seconds, you're not just fighting with a cable. You're experiencing two decades of technological evolution colliding inside one tiny metal port. For years, one connector dominated your desk, your consoles, and practically every device you owned. And it turns out, the story behind this shift is far more dramatic, far-reaching, and transformative than most people realize. So today we're digging into the quiet revolution in your cables as we explore the big question, USB-A versus USB-C. Why are we moving from one to the other? Right here on History of Simple Things. To understand this transition, we need to look back at the mid-1990s. Before USB existed, computers felt like hardware minefields. You had serial ports for mice, parallel ports for printers, PS2 ports for keyboards, firewire for certain devices, and sometimes proprietary connectors unique to specific brands. Nothing was intuitive. Nothing was interchangeable. Each accessory demanded its own special port, and setting up a PC felt like navigating a wiring puzzle. Then, USB arrived, Universal Serial Bus, and at its heart was the familiar rectangular connector, USB-A. Simple, standardized, and built for ease, USB-A promised plug-and-play functionality, a unified shape, and a port every computer could share. Its early speed of 12 megabits per second felt revolutionary for the consumer market. Overnight, USB-A became the new universal handshake between devices. Printers, mice, keyboards, storage drives, game controllers, cameras, everything adopted the same rectangular interface. For nearly 20 years, USB-A became the face of connectivity, appearing on PCs, televisions, consoles, cars, and even power banks. It didn't just simplify technology, it unified it. And for a long time, that was enough. But as the world moved towards smaller devices and faster data, the cracks in USB-A's design became impossible to ignore. Its most infamous flaw? Orientation. USB-A was directional, with a fixed top and bottom, and users often joked that it took three tries to plug it in correctly. That physical limitation wasn't just annoying, it was inefficient. USB-A also struggled with versatility. It wasn't designed to carry high wattage power, deliver video output, or support rapidly increasing data demands. The tech ecosystem was evolving, and USB-A was still shaped for the bulky desktops of the 1990s. Laptops got thinner, phones became computers in your pocket. Tablets became productivity tools. Cameras shot higher resolutions and needed faster offloads. But the old connector remained big, rigid, and limited. Even as USB-A evolved with faster standards like USB 2.0 and USB 3.0, the port itself couldn't escape its physical restrictions. It could carry data and basic power, but the modern world needed a connector capable of doing much more, all through one unified shape. This is where USB-C enters the scene. Introduced in the mid-2010s, USB-C wasn't just a redesign. It was a complete reinvention of what a connector could be and what it should do. The first thing anyone notices is its symmetry. There's no right side up, no wrong direction, no guessing game. It slides in effortlessly, instantly solving one of the most persistent annoyances in tech history. But USB-C's real impact hides beneath its small, rounded exterior. It was engineered to be universal, truly universal. 
One connector for data, power, video, networking, audio, storage, displays, charging, and more. Unlike USB-A, which had to rely on additional ports for specialized tasks, USB-C consolidated those functions into a single compact interface. Its shape was intentionally small to fit the next generation of devices, from thin laptops and wireless earbuds to powerful tablets and phones. It wasn't designed for the past. It was designed for the next 20 years of innovation. What truly sets USB-C apart is its capacity. While USB-A could handle basic tasks, USB-C could scale far beyond it through standards like USB 3.2, 2, USB 4, power delivery, and Thunderbolt, USB-C cables can move massive amounts of data, deliver high-resolution video, and push enough wattage to power full laptops. USB-C can carry up to 240 watts of power depending on the cable and device, which means it isn't just charging phones, it can power gaming laptops, monitors, docking stations, and portable workstations. It can drive external displays using Display Port Alt Mode or HDMI Alt Mode, turning a single cable into both a charger and a video output line. And when paired with Thunderbolt or USB 4, USB C can move data so quickly that it replaces older interfaces like Ethernet, Firewire, and even some proprietary ports used by cameras and audio equipment. USB-C's physical connector is merely the doorway. The real intelligence lies in the protocols flowing through it, giving it a flexibility no older connector could ever match. The shift toward USB-C wasn't immediate, but once momentum started, it became unstoppable. Apple moved its iPads to USB-C, then its MacBooks, and eventually the iPhone. Nintendo adopted USB-C for the Switch. Laptop manufacturers, eager to build slimmer and more efficient machines, began removing USB-A entirely. Power adapters, monitors, power banks, headphones, all increasingly standardized around USB-C. This wasn't just convenience, it was efficiency, uniformity, and progress. USB-A built the foundation of modern connectivity. USB-C is building the next generation. One symbolizes the early days of personal computing, the other symbolizes unification and efficiency in the digital era. We're living through the moment where one standard slowly hands the torch to another. And while USB-A remains part of our everyday lives, its successor is rapidly reshaping everything we plug in, power up, or sync. In the end, the shift from USB-A to USB-C isn't just about shapes or ports, it's about designing technology that adapts to how we live today and how we'll live tomorrow. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.